Today we are performing another example with Nash Translution 200. Uh, we are going to perform a topology optimization uh, and we are going to focus on manufacturing constraints. My name is Christian and I'll be going through today's example. Here's our goal by the end of the video. We are going to start with the original design that you see here in yellow on the left. We are going to say that we want to maximize the stiffness of the final design while reducing the mass by 70%. What's special about this example is that we again want to impose manufacturing constraints. So here we are going to impose both symmetry and casting constraints. And so here's a quick agenda. Uh, I'll give you some more information regarding how this structure is loaded. Uh, we'll then go ahead and talk about the optimization problem statement. This is a summary of design regions, the objective, and constraints. This is very critical to have summarized before starting, so I'll give this a few minutes. Then we're going to go through each step you need to take to convert your original BDF file to Solution 200. We'll then go ahead and actually perform the optimization with Nastran. And then at the end, we'll go ahead and review the results. I should mention that some of you watching this video might be new users of topology optimization. At the end of the video, I'm going to go over some very common questions that are asked. I'm going to cover some uh, fundamental concepts, key terminology. So definitely, if you're a new user, stick around for that. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, my name is Christian. I'm presenting today's example. If you are an engineer and you have any questions regarding NAS Translation 200, if you want optimization training, you can contact me at this email address. Uh, if you're a student or engineer and want access to the NAS Translation 200 web app, you can also contact me. Now let's quickly talk about how this structure is uh, laid out. Uh, we are going to have it fixed on one end and then we're going to have a torsional load applied on the other end. So here you can see these uh, two loading vectors as I'm drawing them on the screen. Very straightforward. Uh, this entire region is associated with P-Solid 1. This is something very critical I'll go over in the next uh, few slides. Uh, now for design regions. We are going to let the optimizer look at each element in this region and we are going to let it uh, perform the optimization on this region. Uh, specifically, we want to add some restrictions. We want to add mirror symmetry restrictions. So here in white is our plane of symmetry. Whatever the design is on the left, so I don't know, it might look something like this. We also want to emulate that on the opposing side. So we are going to say that the, here you can see the coordinate system that we define, this coordinate axis system. This symmetry plane is known as a YZ plane. We're going to say that we should have symmetry across this plane and casting, which direction will the casting occur? Here we're going to use the same coordinate system. We're going to say that the casting will be allowed in the Y direction. And now what about our objective? We are going to say we want to minimize the compliance. This is another way of saying we want to maximize the stiffness as much as possible. If you have any questions regarding what compliance is, uh, please stick around at the end of the video where I go through this definition and more. Now our design constraints. We are going to say that always ensure that the mass of each new design is less than 0.3. Or here we are saying that make sure that you're always reducing the mass by 70%. Now, why? what does it look like without casting? Here it is, here's a topology solution without casting. You can see all the voids. Uh, you can already tell trying to manufacture this part is very difficult. Here on the right is the same topology solution with casting constraints. You can see this design is more manufacturable. And this is what I'll be covering in the next few moments. What is the procedure for NAS Translation 200? First of all, you need to have a BDF file. So it may be the case that you already do have a BDF file. You may have already constructed your own design in your pre-post processor. At the end of that, so at the end of this, you might already have a BDF file. And here, let me go ahead and uh, find my example. 
So here's the patch on directory. I've already created the BDF file. This BDF file includes the entire finite element model. This will be your starting point. Uh, if you want to follow along with this example, from the home page of the web app, go to the tutorial section, go to topology and topometry tutorials, scroll down to this example, optimization and manufacturing constraints, and right click and save the link as to start the BDF or to start this example. So here is the same BDF file. Uh, at this point, you should be able to follow along. What's what what happens after this? I'm going to go through the process of converting this BDF file to solution 200. This is what's going to let you perform the topology optimization. Here we're going to specify what regions can be designed. Uh, what is our objective and what are our constraints? I'll then perform the optimization and then we'll have a quick look at the results. Let's go ahead and start off with the web app. The web app will let you take an existing 100 series BDF file, so if it's 101 in statics, and we are going to convert it to solution 200. Solution 200 is the solution sequence to perform optimization in NASTRAN. So now let's go ahead and step out of the PowerPoint and begin this conversion process with the web app. From the home page, click on topology. This is where you went, want to select the BDF file and upload it to the web app. Here it's identified PSolid1 as a design region. So if we look back in the web app, how do you determine if it's PSolid1 or PSolid2? So from utilities, go to display or rather go to properties and then go to property name plot, select all the properties you might have in this list and click apply. So here it's saying that this whole region is corresponding to P solid one. Now you might be asking yourself, uh, mine doesn't say P solid one. It actually says property for the bulkhead or some miscellaneous name. What you can do is when you import the BDF file, click on MSC National Input prop Options. Here, unmark this checkbox, retrieve names from comments. When you deselect that checkbox, when it imports the BDF file, instead of using the name you gave it, it's going to use the technical name. So here it's going to import the model and say that is PSolid1. If you name the solid a uh, special solid one, if you leave the name as special solid one and you import this BDF file, in this plot that you see in the back, it's going to call it special solid one. So if you want to prevent that again, go to import model, MC Nastran, input options, uncheck the box here, click OK select your BDF file, and then perform the import. Uh, going back to this, again, this whole region is PSolid1, so we'll go ahead and uh, mark this as a design region by clicking the plus icon. Here is our new design region with the label X1. Click on options, and here you can specify what options to turn on. I want to turn on casting, and I believe it was symmetry constraints. So now let's go ahead and configure X1 to have casting and symmetry constraints. So here under use symmetry constraints, I want to say yes. And then for the coordinate system ID, if you look back here, here on this side, might be hard to see. Here is the local coordinate axis system we defined for this example. Let me go ahead and superimpose the mesh again you can see that that axis is right here as I hover over the mouse cursor. And if I turn on an example of what the symmetry plane looks like, this is what it will look like. So here is my YZ symmetry plane using coordinate system one. So now let's go ahead and type in these values here. So here I'll type in one. And if you're asking what, how do I know the identification number of this coordinate system? Again, if you look closely on this coordinate system you created, you see it says one. 
if you're referring to the coordinate system that's here in the bottom left hand corner that's zero so here you could type in zero for that coordinate system but we'll go ahead and use one and then what about the symmetry plane here i want to set the yz plane as the symmetry plane so if you remember that would be this section that i'm uh, highlighting here so we want whatever happens on the left to be equal to the side on the right now what about casting here in the casting column turn it on by saying yes and say the draw direction is one and then here by default um, here it's very subtle but if you expand the width the die option is one and see i think everything else looks good here and here i'll notice one thing uh the status marker if the status column is ever red that means that row has an error that has to be addressed if you look carefully here under symmetry planes it says the input is required so mark this checkbox for the yz plane and that and there you have it the status column is now blue for this row so that design region is good to go let's go ahead and uh, move over to the objective by default the web app will set compliance minimization as the objective so here you see the compliance has already been created it's been set to minimize by minimizing the compliance this is another way of saying maximize the stiffness of this uh, topology solution let's go ahead and move over to the constraints again by default a fractional mass constraint set to 10 percent will be created for you here we want the fractional mass to be 30 or 0.3 so it's very important you include the decimal here what we are saying is with whatever topology solution you arrive at at the end remember we are trying to minimize compliance make sure that the final mass is 30 percent of the original mass this is my design constraint once we're done here uh, we've already completed the variables the objective and the constraints this is our optimization problem statement the design region slash variables the objective and the constraints once i'm done here let's go to settings there is this row called des max this signifies the maximum number of design cycles i've performed this example in the past uh, 50 design cycles was not enough to have the solution converge so for this example let's go ahead and use 100 design cycles now we can go ahead and go to the exporter and download this converted bdf file i'll go ahead and look in my downloads folder i'll extract the contents and there will be a new desktop shortcut here let's go ahead and start nastran and let me quickly summarize what just happened this zip file contains bdf files so for example model bdf previously this used to be a solution 101 bdf file or a linear static analysis one bdf bdf file the web app has converted it to solution 200 it has also included a design model bdf file this includes the nastran statements for the design region the objective and the constraints also, when you click on Start MSC Nastran, Nastran will be uh, executed in the background. You'll get the status page regarding where the uh, optimization is at. Here you can currently see that we are on the 12th design cycle. You can see that the blue icon indicating MSC Nastran is running. Now, when Nastran is running, let me go through some of these slides regarding topology optimization workflows uh, hopefully this next summary is very helpful to you so let's go ahead and get into it what we are doing today is known as the traditional topology optimization approach the objective is to minimize the compliance remember this is analogous to saying maximize the stiffness our constraint is to ensure that the final mass is under a certain mass target so in this example we are saying that the mass target is 0.3 this is in other words saying make sure that the final design 
so thin for vinyl is 30% the original mass. Let's quickly go over what's happening here. We started off with our original BDF file. We converted it to NASTRAN Translucent 200. NASTRAN then performed the topology optimization. In a moment, I'm going to show you the topology solution. And you're going to notice that the solution, uh, here's a different example. The topology solution will be very rough. You're going to have elements. You're going to obviously have uh, situations where you have stress concentrations. Uh, basically, it's a mesh that's not ideal for analysis. The topology solution is more of a conceptual starting point. Once you have that conceptual starting point, you are then to refine that design, clean it up, to an analysis suitable mesh, such as the one in yellow, you then perform a subsequent verification analysis. The results from this analysis can be used to determine if this topological concept from the beginning is a pseudo, has pr produced a suitable uh, solution. Now, let's suppose that your design constraints have not been satisfied. This topology solution at the beginning was not a good topology solution. With this traditional approach, what you often have to do, you have to try different mass targets. So for example, this mass target, you would say uh, aim for a mass target of 0.9. So keep 90% of the mass, reduce the mass by 90%. You might create another topology optimization. Here we're going to say keep 75% of the material, leave out 25% of the material. For each topology attempt, you go through this refinement process and you go through this verification process. At the end, you check which ones provide valid designs and which ones don't. And out of the ones that provide valid designs, select the one that least that weighs the least so if we were using this scenario you find out that optimization a and optimization b produced satisfied constraints here and here so then you get to pick out of these refined designs which ones should i use here this one weighs 9.0 grams this one weighs 7.73 grams this one weighs the least so this is my solution that I'm going to go forward with in my further studies. There is another topology workflow. I'll call this one the latest method. This one is more intuitive. Here the objective is to minimize the fractional mass. So here we are actually minimizing the weight of the part. And here we can actually impose a stress constraint. But normally with the traditional approach you never see a constraint of stress. That is something that you usually leave out with the traditional approach. With the latest topology approach, you can set the objective to minimize the weight and you can actually apply stress constraint. If you want more information regarding this latest topology optimization method, I refer you to this example in the user's guide. So here, let's go ahead and go to the user's guide if I can find it. If you look in the topology and topometry section, this example here, minimizing mass with stress and displacement constraints, this example is the example you want to refer to. This tutorial we are performing today is using the traditional topology optimization approach. Now, while I was speaking, the topology solution has finished. Here you can see it finished at design cycle 63 and the run terminated due to hard convergence at an optimum. This means that the optimization has gone through successfully. In this next page, my results were automatically uploaded for me. Here, I see that the compliance was at this value. Uh, it looks like 18,000. At the very end, the compliance was minimized to 821. So what's more important here is this message, run terminated due to hard convergence. This means the optimization went through successfully. Given this, let's now look at the results in your post processor. Inside of the working directory, 
And let me make sure I'm in the right folder. There's a DES folder. This DES folder contains the normalized material densities for this example. Think of these de normalized densities as your design variables. Also think of them as your uh, ranks. So since these are ranks, these are going to let you decide which elements are important and which ones are not. If you go under Tools, Design Study, and go to Post Process, you can select that DES file and click Apply. Once you click Apply, the results are inside of Patron. You can go to Display Results, select this case, and here the threshold I want to say, let me refer back here, is 0.4. If you have a question why I chose this point four, again, stick around at the end of the video where I cover commonly asked questions and we can go over that later. I'll set the threshold to four and then turn on the fringe and click apply. So this is my topology solution. This is the starting point for this concept. You take this concept and you refine this concept you then perform a verification analysis to make sure that this refined design meets your structural requirements for stress, displacement, uh, stiffness, natural frequencies, and so on and so on. So this would be, or rather, there's a lot more to the workflow. The goal of this video is to show you how to set up a topology optimization. After this, there's still more work to be done. After you have a topology solution, such as this one, such as this blue one, you'll notice that it's very, very coarse. It's not a good mesh to perform an analysis on. You then have to refine the designs. You have to smooth out the elements, such as I'm showing here. You then have to perform a verification analysis to make sure that your stresses or, or your, or rather the, the results are within the specifications you have. In this example, I just got you up to the topology solution, which is here. Uh, again, I'm pretty sure most of my audience is familiar with this process, so I think I'll stop there before this video becomes uh, one hour or two. So now, we are essentially at the end of the tutorial. Here, I'll just go ahead and quickly remind everyone, if you're an engineer, I wanna say that topology optimization is possibly one of the more simpler optimizations out there. Uh, if you have any questions, if you want more training material, if you want guidance, if you want mentorship, my email address is here in the middle of the screen. Please feel free to send me an email. If you're a student, and you're learning topology optimization, if you're an engineer and you're also learning topology optimization, you can get access to the web app also. Just send me an email with your request and I will get back to you with details on how to connect to the web app. So now I get to talk about some commonly asked questions. So the first commonly asked question might be what are the design variables in topology optimization so here just to give it to you straight the normalized material densities are the design variables in topology optimization so now you, your next question might be what is a normalized material density let's suppose we start with the same example and we say that the density is 1000 kilograms per meter cubed as an example, this is for the entire part. What happens in topology optimization, each element is assigned its own independent density, here, density I, if you will. This is normally expressed as a normalized density, density N for normalized. This is equal to the density of that element divided by the original density. So for example, if the normalized density is 
then the density of that element will be 500 kilograms per meter cube divided by 1,000. 1,000. So that is what the design variables are in topology optimization. They are normalized material densities uh, defined by this expression that I just gave. Here in this plot, these are normalized material densities that are given. This spectrum here, you can see that a normalized density of 1 means that that element has the same density as before. Here, if it had a density, a normalized density of 1, that element's density is 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. If the normalized density is very, very close to 0, that means that, that material density is 0. This range of values uh, it can be considered a rank. So if it's 1, it's very important. If it's 0, it's not important. So here, everything that's in white, you can essentially ignore. But everything that's strong in color, meaning the normalized density is close to 1, uh, these are regions that you should consider keeping. The next question, what is compliance? Uh, in your F06 file, You'll find this section called element strain energies. Uh, in this example, I only had one load case, so I only have one value for total energy. You'll notice that here the strain energy is about 9,000. If we look at the compliance for the starting initial design, you can see that the compliance is 18,000. The total strain energy is half the compliance. So if the objective is to minimize the compliance, you're effectively minimizing the total strain energy, which in another way is saying you're maximizing the stiffness of this example. Here on this slide, I just have some instructions on how to enable this output in the F06 file. By default, this output does not uh, end up in the F06 file. But if you follow these steps, to modify the BDF file, uh, you'll have this output afterwards. What is fractional mass? Fractional mass, as its name implies, uh, is the mass compared to the original design. So here, let's suppose that the original design had uh, six grams as an example. Let me exit this so I read that G a little better. So again, let's suppose that the starting design, I have this mesh here composed with three elements. Uh, the starting mass is six grams. Here, the normalized density is one, 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 one. This next design, 1.8, is 1.8 grams. The normalized densities are 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3. You notice that this is actually 30% of the previous design. So here, the fractional mass, FR mass, is 0.3. This is what FR mass is. It's, uh, it's, it's a comparison to the original design. Now, there's one other thing I want to mention here. This is your initial design here. At the moment the optimization occurs, the initial design is reduced. Uh, this isn't a term you'll find in papers. This is just a word I came up with to communicate the concept. So what happens here is each element has a normalized density of 1. If you specify the FR mass is equal to 0 0.3, 0 0.4, some other value, Remember, this FR mass is the same value that's specified here. So here, FR mass should always be less than 0.3. When you say that the FR mass, FRM, FRM for mass, should be less than 0.3, you are saying that my constraint is that any design that you come up with, and here I'm, I'm acting as trans a person, always make sure that the fractional mass is less than 0.3. So from the initial design to the start of the topology optimization, 
there is a reduction that's performed. This reduction is to ensure that the starting point of the design satisfies this constraint. Here, the fractional mass is 1.0. If we started at this point where all the normalized densities are one, this would invalidate, this will violate this first constraint. But if we first reduce all the normalized densities to 0.3, the fractional mass is 0.3. We satisfy the constraint here. So this design is, or this constraint is satisfied. This is the starting point of topology optimization. Then during the optimization process, each normalized density will either be decreased or it will be increased all the while maintaining the requirement that the final mass or the mass of the design should be less than 30% or 0.3. So that is what fractional mass is. And here is just a repetition of what I said previously. Uh, one, there's a reduction, R-E-D-U-C-T-I-O-N. Uh, this is to make sure that you're under the, the upper limit of the fractional mass. And this example was 0.3. From that point, it will either decrease the material density here. It will increase here. It will use the optimizer to determine which densities to increase it or decrease. At the end, you have the final normalized densities. Uh, one usually means that you should keep the element. Uh, zero means that you should probably remove that element. Uh, Earlier, I specified a threshold of 0.4. This is saying that keep any element greater with the normalized density greater than 0.4. So this should actually be KE, keep. Anything less than that, you can potentially ignore it. So here, everything in white, you could potentially ignore. So here, I'm just going to scribble over it. And your final result might be something like the one on the right. So this is our topology solution for this example. Uh, this is definitely not the end of topology, or, or rather the workflow. Remember that you still have to take that topology solution. You have to refine it. You have to smooth out the mesh. And then you have to perform your final verification. This tutorial was using the traditional approach. So it might be the case that when you perform your verification analysis, your constraints are still violated at the end. So this whole solution may not be a correct one. If that happens, increase the fractional mass. Try, try a situation where you remove less weight. Uh, here, the example I just did is removing 70% of the weight. So if that doesn't work, try removing only 40%. Or in fractional mass turns, keep 60% of the mass. So what you end up finding out are, is that you might have to perform multiple topology optimizations to find that good final design. And actually this would be a good time to show you how to do that. So here, let's go ahead and start with point three. So this would be optimization C. So here, let's go ahead and rename this. So this is the file, just download it. This is a FR mass of 30%. So here, this is going to try and keep only 30% of the material. Then I'm going to create a new version where I, where I say uh, keep 60% of the material. So here, 0.6 for the upper, go ahead and Export this one, FR mass, 60%. And then we'll create another one. Uh, this one, we are being very conservative. Conservative. We are keeping 90% of the mass. So once you have all these uh, optimizations set up, you can then run each one by one 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 by one rather you can then import your normalized material densities you can create these plots in your post processor for each topology example that i just showed so i just created three a b and c each one having a different 
fractional mass. For each topology solution, remember to refine the design, then verify the design. Check which ones satisfy your constraints at the end. These are supposed to be checkboxes. And then for the ones that do satisfy your constraints, so here A and B satisfy your constraints, pick the least weight out of these designs. So here 7.739 is the least weight that satisfies the constraints. So this is my solution for this example. Um, of course, I'll leave it up to you to take this example, refine it, and see for yourself what design you come up with. That is your optimum solution. Uh, that's essentially the end of the tutorial. Here I'll end off with this slide. And if you have any questions, as always, you can contact me at this email address. Thank you for watching.